Today I'd like to talk about Olive, a piece of open source software that can possibly be an alternative when it comes to video editing to something like Premiere Pro, especially for beginners. Hello and welcome here on Random Rotation. I hope you're all doing well. First, let's take a quick look at the software and after that, I'll tell you who should consider working with a tool like Olive, in my opinion. All right. And this is Olive's UI. Top left corner, we have this note editor in the middle, a footage viewer and a second tab to change parameters. And on the right, we have the sequence viewer. And in the lower half, we have our project overview window on the left. Next to it, we can find all the important tools, a timeline, and on the very right, there is audio monitoring. Some more UI elements can be found under window, and then you just have to open them here, like this pixel sampler, for example, and you can click and drag it wherever you want. Just find a place, let go, and boom, there it lives now. The pixel sampler, as you might have guessed, shows you exact RGB values for every individual pixel. But I close it for now, I don't need it. And now let's import some footage. We could either do it the classic way, file, import, and then search for every single file we need, or what I like way better, drag and drop. Let me find something on my second screen here that you can't see at the moment. These three video files here. I just let go and Olive is importing the files. Easy. And now at first glance, I can see the name of the video files, their length and the frame rate they were shot in. Let me import one more thing, this song here. And now I simply double click on one of the clips and Olive opens it in the footage viewer. If for some reason you don't see anything, it might be because you're still on the parameter editor, then just simply change tabs and you're good to go. Olive should do this automatically, but as of now, Olive is still in beta, so don't expect it to work the same on every single machine. What works for me might crash your system. I don't know. In that case, just write a bug report, send it to them, and then they can fix it. Cool, and now let's get into some basic editing. I set an in point here using the shortcut I and the shortcut O for an out point, and now this blue section here is selected. If you've ever edited a video before, chances are you already know these shortcuts. Olive works the same way. Now let's drag and drop the selection down in the empty timeline area. And now we could either detect all the parameters automatically or we can do it manually. I'm not a huge fan of automatic detection, which is why I would never check don't show me again because what's happening then is that Olive would create a bunch of sequences with wrong parameters. That's not what I want. I do it the manual way. We do have a list of presets over here, but be careful. Every time I am using them, Olive crashes for me. <laughs> Again, that might be different for you. Just give it a try. Now, I could rename my sequence to something meaningful like test, 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 but let's be honest, sequence one is just fine for now. The only thing I want to change right now is the FPS to 25. Okay, congratulations. If you followed along, you just created your first Olive sequence. Here it is. And right now, the two clips, audio and video, are linked together. You can see it when I'm dragging around these clips. No matter which one I grab, the other one follows. That can be changed, of course, by selecting them and then going up to Edit, Link, unlink, whoops, sorry, link unlink, shortcut control L. And now I can individually move these clips around, which is pretty cool. There even is a 
visual indication that these clips are not linked anymore, even though it's pretty subtle. Let me link them again. Can you see what's changing? <laughs> linked clips have underlined titles and unlinked clips are not underlined. Yeah, I told you it's not too obvious. <laughs> now I can right click on the audio track and delete it without deleting the video track as well. And then I can drag my song down here in audio track one. And let me expand this for you so you can see a little better what we are working with. And now I would say, let's see what we've got so far. Whoa, not too shabby. Movie magic. <laughs> let's take a look at this clip here. And I think I want to use it from roughly here to, let's say, here. But this time I don't drag audio and video down into the timeline because what happens then is that I destroy my song, which is not what I want. Let's undo this and only drag the video file down into the timeline. And now I can adjust the length of the clip to my liking. Something like this should work fine. Let's watch it again. Pretty good, I think. We did a nice job. Now we imported one more clip, this one. I opened the back and I grabbed my camera. All right, let's use this as well. I and O again for my in and my out point and then I drag it down into my sequence and adjust it. This is all just super basic editing, but Olive can handle it very well, no problem. Um, during the whole time I had this snapping function on. It can be toggled on and off down here, but I do like working with snapping turned on. And that's not only a, an olive thing, I turn it on in every editing software that I use. It just makes me faster. And hey, faster is always welcome, right? So I very rarely turn this off. Sometimes, yes, but rarely. And of course, like in every other editing tool, we do have a bunch of other tools to choose from. For example, this razor tool here. That is doing exactly what you might have already guessed. It's cutting clips. No surprise. Let me undo all these cuts. Nobody needs them. We also have a ripple tool, a rolling tool, a slip tool and a slide tool. And we have a hand to move around in our sequence. We can zoom in and out and we can record voice over audio. Also, we have a transition tool. Let me quickly show you how to add a cross dissolve between clips. Maybe not here. Delete this one. And just click and drag the transition. Let me do this again. And when I think it's long enough, I simply let go, which is a super nice way to add something like a cross dissolve. I like this approach a lot. I think it's super easy this way. It's good. Let's add a title to our little sequence here, shall we? I clicked on this little plus sign. It's called add tool. And down here we can find a title tool. And just like with the transitions, it's just a matter of dragging the title in place. And voila, here we have our title. Changes to this title can now be made over here in the parameter editor. I can change the text from sample text to simple text because I'm super funny. Or I could change its color or the font. But let me show you one more important thing. And that's these stopwatches here. I bet a lot of you already know them from After Effects. They are creating keyframes. 
And let me change the color of this text from white to something uh, brownish, dark brown, like so, over time. And I also want to add a cross dissolve at the end, a pretty short one, and at the beginning, a little bit longer. And now let's see what we've got. That's it. Title tool. Pretty handy to have. So if you ask me, these are some of the most basic and most important tools to edit videos. And Olive can handle all that pretty well. I know that there is a whole note editor section that we haven't talked about, but I think this whole technical part of the video is already a bit long. So let me end this here. Just one more thing. Of course, it is possible to export your video out of Olive Control M. This window pops up and then you can dial in all your settings and export your video. But with that, I won't bother you right now. I just wanted to quickly demonstrate the ease of use of Olive. A lot of it should be pretty familiar to people who work with other editing tools before. The whole UI, for example, to me, it looks a lot like Premiere Pro. But honestly, that's okay for me. There's no need to reinvent everything from scratch. What do you think? The only thing you should always keep in mind when working with Olive is this tool is still in beta. So it might crash. Don't forget that. Okay, that's that. Now, who is Olive for? I honestly don't see it as a substitute for anything in my own workflow. I use either Premiere or DaVinci Resolve. But with that, I'm certainly not saying that we're dealing with a bad tool here. Quite the opposite. Olive is not as extensive as these other packages, which is why it's perfect for people who are just getting started and want to learn how video editing works from scratch. For those people, there are much more elementary questions than crazy video transitions and over-the-top color grading. Such a person may be completely overwhelmed by all the features and possibilities of a full-blown editing tool like DaVinci. You see, depending on where you come from, it can be quite beneficial to start with something simple like Olive. For this very reason, I can imagine it being used in schools for example, or you want to do a bit of YouTube in your free time, have a job that fully engages you, but every now and then it's fun to work on a video. No problem. With Olive, you can cover quite a lot without having to plunder your bank account first. <laughs> and if you find out after editing your first few pieces that you want to dive in deeper into video editing, then you can take all your knowledge gathered in Olive and move on to more complex tools. Because the basics of video editing are always the same, no matter which tool you use. A well-set cut is and remains a well-set cut, period. Now, I am not a student and I'm not a hobbyist filmmaker. Nevertheless, I checked out this software, of course, to be able to make this video here, but also because I think it's always a good idea to stay up to date. A few years ago, no one spoke of DaVinci as an editing, an editing software, but bit by bit, it has become a really, really strong option in this sector. Here we now have an app which currently only a very small group of people is aware of compared to Premiere, Final Cut, you name it. There is no huge development team behind it, but who knows where this journey will end. Just think about the success story of Blender. 
ignored by professionals for a very long time. It quietly grew up to something really big and now it can no longer be denied that what Ton Rosendahl started back in 1995 deserves its place in the current 3D landscape. <laughs> Alright, let's summarize. I can recommend Olive to beginners. Just give it a shot, there's nothing wrong with that. However, if you're already a little deeper into video editing and like to spend a lot of time on your grading and such, I don't really think that all of this is for you. Anyway, if you would like to try it out for yourself, you can find the link to their website down in the description. And that's it from me for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, stay clean, stay healthy, and bye for now.